So with Debian 10 codenamed Buster finally out for everyone to download, I wanted to do some videos that are specific to Debian. And in this case, I wanted to go over the net installer for Debian and show you guys that. And then in another video, I'm also going to show you the live installer as well. The live installer is great for those of you that want a laptop or a desktop install. So if that's what you are intending on doing, then you want to go ahead and make sure you watch that video instead. But the net install is great for those of you that want to install multiple desktop environments. Maybe you want more customization in your installation, or especially if you are installing Debian on a server, those are good use cases for the net install method, which is what we're going to go ahead and do in this video. So if you're still watching this, then I assume that's what you want to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at the net installer for Debian 10. Okay, so here on my laptop, I am going to install Debian on this very machine. Now I do have Debian installed already because I've been playing with it. I've been installing and reinstalling it multiple times, but I am not going to be installing this in a virtual machine. I am actually going to show you the process on my actual laptop as I install it. I'm going to wipe the drive and take you through the entire installation. But first of all, what we need to do is actually get our hands on Debian. So we'll just bring up a web browser. So here I am on the Getting Debian page in my browser. Here's the URL at the top of the screen. I know the text is kind of small there, so just check the show notes below the video for an actual link. Now there's two options that we can utilize here. We could just download straight from here the 64-bit net install. I always recommend 64-bit for pretty much everybody nowadays. They do have a 32-bit version out there for those of you that need that, but I really don't think very many, if any of you actually need 32-bit in 2019. But go ahead and download the 64-bit version. That is one option. But there is another option as well. I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab. So here I have another URL. And not, I'm not even going to attempt to read all of this, but again, check the show notes. And what's special about this version is it's also a net install that we're going to be downloading, but this one has non-free software on this one. And the reason why you might consider this is if you have proprietary hardware on your machine, especially Wi-Fi, I need this specific version for my Intel wireless. And it's not a version of Debian that a lot of people talk about or even know exists. So either way, we are downloading a net install, either from this URL or from the first page I mentioned. So this non-free version here does include that. Doesn't mean non-free as in you're going to pay for it. It means that it has software that isn't open source included on the CD. But again, with Intel wireless being very popular, I think a lot of you are going to need this. And basically what you do is you scroll down here and you can see we have a net install, AMD 64, just like the original, but it also has non-free software in it. Either way, what you're gonna do is you are going to create a bootable flash drive from that media or from that download and then boot your computer from it. I've already done that. I've created my flash drive with the net install image already on it. So if you haven't already done so, just download the ISO file. I have another video on my channel that goes over the Etcher method. Etcher is an awesome application you can use. Regardless if you're running Mac OS, Windows, or another Linux distribution, you can use Etcher to create your bootable flash drive. So check that video out if you don't already know how to do that. So I'll go ahead and put this in my computer. And now that I have the flash drive ready to go, let's go ahead and close out of my browser here and let's go ahead and reboot. And I'll go ahead and press the hotkey for the boot menu. Everybody's different. F12 is very common. F11 is common. On the System76 laptop, it's F7. So I will select my flash drive, my strangely named flash drive right here, and press Enter. We get the annoying beep. And we can do a graphical install or a regular install. The installer is basically the same. The graphical install looks a little bit better, but the options are pretty much identical. But that's the one that I'm going to go with. I'll press enter. 
And here we have the very first screen. At this point, if you have an ethernet cable plugged in, um, that's great. If you don't, I recommend that you do that because that's the best way to go. If you're not using the non-free version, then you probably need to have the ethernet cable because Wi-Fi will most likely not work until you fix that later. Or if you're using non-free, then that's not a problem, but I still recommend the ethernet cable be plugged in. In my case, for whatever reason, the mouse does not work on this laptop during Debian's installer. It works fine in Debian itself, but I'm not going to be able to use my mouse. But on this graphical install method, you actually should be able to. But with the keyboard, and this is also true with the non-graphical version, you can just use your up and down arrows here to change your selections. You could press tab to uh, you know, move your selection to another, another button. So you can see that continue in the bottom right is highlighted. I can go left and right to select an option there. So I'll, I'll just press enter on continue. And it's just asking me for you know my country. So of course, in your on your end, you'll just select whatever makes sense for you. So I'm going to accept the defaults for me. United States is fine. So I'll go ahead and tab over here to continue. Enter. And American English is fine for me. Adjust yours accordingly. I'll continue. It says detect and mount CD. Even though it's a flash drive, it doesn't change the verbiage. That's interesting. But I will not nitpick. So in my case, I am actually not using the non-free version. This is the standard net install. So it's basically, it's basically detecting that my Wi-Fi adapter doesn't have the appropriate firmware to make it work. That's provided by the IWL Wi-Fi package that's included in non-free. So if you see this message, your Wi-Fi will not work when you boot into the installed version you might want to consider using the non-free ISO image instead. But in my case, I don't care because I have an ethernet cable connected. So I'm going to select no. It's basically giving you an option to uh, load the missing firmware from removable media. I don't even recommend that you use that method. You definitely want to install the apt package from the non-free repositories. So again, if you see this message, you should be using the non-free image. So I'll tab down here to continue. I should detect my ethernet. And there we go. So for hostname, you want to change this to make this uh, something you can identify on your network to differentiate it from other hosts. But I'm going to leave mine as Debian because I'm not feeling very creative today. And then I'll go down here to continue and press enter. Domain name, I will leave blank, but if you do have one, if that matters on your network, then you can add that. Now it's asking me to create a root password, so I will go ahead and type that in and confirm that. I'm just tabbing down between the fields. I'll tab again and again to continue and enter. Now it's asking me to type my full name. I'll just type my first name, why not? It doesn't really matter and then continue. Username, that's fine. You just basically put whatever username you want for your user account. That's fine for mine. And now we have to choose a password for our regular user, so I will add that here. Tab down to continue and enter again. Now you select your time zone. Eastern is correct in my case. So here we can partition our disk. And this is one of the reasons why someone would choose to use the net install rather than the live install, because you can go down here and you can manually partition. You can set up LVM, for example. You can use the entire disk if you'd like. Actually, that's what I'm going to do because in this video, I'm assuming that Debian is the only operating system that you want. Use entire disk will wipe out everything, but that's okay because that's what I want. So hopefully you've already backed up all of your files. So I'll continue. It's asking me to choose which hard drive I want to install Debian onto. Make sure you choose carefully. 
SDB is my flash drive, so I definitely don't want to, you know, basically install Debian on the very same thing that, in, you know, Debian's installing from. So I'll select the Samsung SSD, which is the correct one in my case. So continue. And we have an option here. We could do like all files in one partition, but we could also do a separate slash home partition. That's what I recommend for most people. If you have a very small hard drive, that probably doesn't make sense. But with a 500 gig SSD, I think that's fine in my case. Having a separate home partition is generally a good idea. So that's what I'm going to go with and I'll continue. It's just basically giving me an option to just look at the partitioning that it wants to do, which I'm okay with this. I'll go ahead and continue. And another confirmation, so I just press the down arrow to select yes. I'll tab over to continue. And it's gonna go ahead and create those partitions. At this point, it's already wiped out everything on my drive. And now it'll install the base system packages. So now that the base packages are installed, it is asking us for our location yet again. But for this, it's actually for the archive, for, so for basically for the package manager. So I'll leave the default of United States in my case. And then uh, deb.debian.org is good enough. I'll continue. I don't have a proxy, so you could just press enter here. But if you have one, feel free to enter that in. So here we have an option to help the Debian developers with some statistics about the most used packages. I don't see any reason not to do this because we're getting Debian for free, so we may as well help them out. I'm going to choose no here, though, because this is just a demo and it would just wouldn't be a valid test case for them. So I'll continue. And now we get to what is, in my opinion, the coolest screen of the entire process because we can choose our desktop environment. Now, by default, it's, it shows Debian desktop environment. That's what's selected. And I'm going to leave that selected. That'll give us the GNOME desktop. Now, we could you know, choose GNOME right here, but we're getting GNOME by basically in, you know, choosing the Debian desktop environment because GNOME is the default. But we could just go crazy here and install all of them if we want to. If it's a server, then we just install none of them because generally with a server, we don't even want a graphical user interface at all. I do though, because this is a laptop, so I'll select this. You can select as many desktop environments as you want to, or none for that matter. You might get an option after this for the login manager. And generally speaking, I don't, I don't have it on my screen right now, but if you are using GNOME or GNOME is one of the selections you've chosen, go with GDM if you're asked. If you are using GNOME by itself, of course you get GDM anyway, but GNOME's lock screen pretty much depends on GDM. Yes, there's a way to get the lock screen to work without GDM, but I'm not going over that here. If you are using KDE Plasma, you'll go with SDDM, but LightDM is a good choice for you know a general purpose login manager that doesn't have a preference that's good if you have multiple desktop environments but generally speaking if gnome is your primary or is one of your selections go with gdm if kde plasma is your primary then you can go with that uh, sddm otherwise if, if you're installing a bunch of desktop environments use light ddm otherwise excuse me light dm otherwise gdm is a good option now, now you can even set up a web server if you'd like. Now, I'm never going to print from this, so I'm going to deselect that. I do generally use an SSH server, so I will make sure that is selected. I see no reason not to choose standard utilities here, so you may as well select that option. And then I will tab over here to continue. All right, installation is complete. So I will tab down here to continue and press enter. Make sure to remove my flash drive here so it doesn't boot back into the installer. So now we have the grub boot screen. So good sign. 
And you can't see this, but I'm basically logging in. The screen recorder isn't active yet. And let's see if it works now. And there we go. We have a successful installation. We see the default GNOME desktop is here and it's ready to go. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. That was my overview of the net install process of Debian. Go ahead and check out my live install video as well, which is already on my channel. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.